as these uh, actors you have here use the figures as also the one you use in the film, or as you are casting differently? Uh, well, there are no actors in the Night Watch, it's the real people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the Night Watch. <laughs> No, that was a sort of a separate little coda because, as you remember, because you went there, we needed to make some sort of prologue. So we gathered together a bunch of uh, figurants and extras to portray in costume. I think we were three days filming in order to make a sort of a vivant, tableau vivant situation as an introduction. It was good casting, actually. Some of them looked very. I ought to say, I don't know whether Wolfgang did, when you first came into this room, which was probably about the size of this. We had uh, 40 screens. There were 40 screens containing all this fragmented information and a lot more of what you've seen here. But we did have one massive screen on the back wall which actually <coughs> showed what you've just seen. So you've only seen one forty-first of the total experience. It's like going into a cinema with 40 screens. I mean, not such an unusual thing now. You see it at car shows and you see it in Walt Disney. For the particular purposes that we, we put it for, I think it meant an entertaining introduction to the piece de resistance. That is actually a question I have. I heard from some sources <laughs> that your new, your new passion is now video. Uh, VJ. 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 Yeah. <laughs> you want to, to make a wish? DJ Spooky look old with his uh, mix, you know, because you are sitting there and can you explain a bit of what you do? How well, I think you, you probably know, I mean, many of you know, because I've been talking about it for so long, about my dissatisfactions with this old-fashioned medium called cinema, which everybody is struggling to reevaluate and to reinvent in many, many different ways. And um, I suppose the notions of what cinema is, sitting in the dark, looking in one direction, sitting still, these sort of phenomena should be blasted away. And I suspect that the notion of um, the VJ, the video jockey, it's been around, of course, for some time. I think probably at least 10 years ago this began to surface. Originally it was DJ simply adding quite simple imagery to the notion of what they were playing on their discs. But gradually it's become more and more popular. But most of the visual apparatus which is associated with uh, DJ viewing has been very much um, like visual wallpaper. It's been decorative. It's been merely, I suppose, illustrational of the music. But I think, I think it's an extraordinary opportunity to introduce structures and strategies um, of different sorts in order to make the whole phenomenon far more interesting, far more fascinating, and let's hope in some curious way more worthwhile as a human experience. I think the fact that the DJ VJ thing has got uh, live action, we could, I suppose, call it simply associated with sweaty dancing, but don't let's chuck that out because it has an extraordinary five senses dimensionality. It has an enormous amount of energy. It's driven very largely by the laptop generation, who I need, very much need. These are the people who are going to invent the tropes of the future. Um, I have found we have an internet uh, video game called the Tulsalooper Journey, which has 150,000 hits a day, and the people who are playing that game are coming to all these VJ shows. We've done about 20 of them, mostly in Western Europe, all the way from Gdansk, where we had 10,000 people, all the way to small and discreet clubs in the south of France. We have a South American tour that starts probably in October. We have a North American tour and we also have a Russian tour. And there's huge numbers of people are beginning to invite us to come to these things. Let me explain basically how it works. I have a very, very large television screen, a touch screen. And I have broken, I've taken the two hour version of the Tulsa Looper film, some of which we saw last night, and I've broken it up into 2,000 loops. Some of these loops are only a few seconds long, so just represent the gesture like that, repeatedly. You know the phenomenon. You've seen all those video notions of how it's performed in video clips. Some of the sections are much longer, maybe some of them even as long as 20 seconds. They have dialogue on them and they have music. I have control over all these 2,000 loops. I touch the screen and I can push these loops to any assortment of screens, some of them extremely large, in any given environment. Most of the environments probably are more or less like this, 270 degrees, but some of them indeed have been 360. I'm sure some of you must have been to the DJ, DJ situation somewhere along the line. 
But what is happening now, of course, is that although the initial shows were related to <coughs> Dutch D DJs that I worked with, um, all sorts of video festivals and uh, those institutions often tagged on the film festivals were opening up new media festivals, became very interested, and ultimately art houses and museums. So I'm now welcome in museums as well as discotheques, so there's a wide variety of excitements. <laughs> we plan to make a series of new programs. Um, I want to devise a special work deliberately for a VJ situation. I'm going to call it the Quadruple Fruit. And we're going to make four films, which will all act independently, but we can mesh together by, uh, I know we're not talking 2,000 loops now, we're talking 10,000 loops. Don't be surprised at that number, because this infamous, this, these, these machineries, I have to say also that probably Holland and certainly Amsterdam are the cutting edge of this sort of equipment. Rotterdam, I think, has been probably now for three or four years manufacturing this sort of stuff, highly, highly skilled. And they're now, of course, custom building it for me, for what I work. Um, I, what I want to do now is to perform these things in a series of groups and combinations, which hasn't been used before. So we are a particular spur to really pushing the technology on. <coughs> on. It's a very exciting experience. Um, it needs to grow. I'm fascinated by the language. And let's see how we can push and pull it. So I was actually hoping, I did actually talk to Johannes right. Do you remember that's how I heard by saying, <laughs> how can we have a VJ show? Any, a stadium for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought we'd do it on the football pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <correct. laughs> no, but the point is, my point is actually, been, it's not so more informative, that's one part. So now, how is this, all these enterprises, starting with your films, how you did your films, then to the Lupa, is so much more than a film, you know, since it stuff, uh, you did for Rembrandt and probably for now in the future for many of that, and this VJ, how they all kind of the same spirit in there. They are not actually separate, they no. have different audiences maybe, nicht? because that what you say about VJ, you can also say something which happens after you left the museum and it still goes on on certain nights, nicht? shouldn't be all the time, then it would get get boring, but in certain nights, the Rembrandt night watching <coughs> could come back to, uh, to that, because you left this back there, or some other guy uh, VJs the same. Yeah, I think we open the doors right. for all sorts of other people, certainly, to make a contribution, and to push it and pull it in directions that maybe doesn't particularly interest me. Right. But, but also your style, <coughs> if you remember, you are, how you, your perspective, your mind, it never is just one set, right? It needs to open many other possibilities and right away, not just later. <laughs> like that. And the technology is coming more. That would be my question. Do you feel that the technology is helping you out here more and more? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's a sort of two way thing. You know, we find technology number 427 adapted, adopted find people are fascinated in what we would do it and encourage them to take the technology on again. So, you know, we respond to already existing technology, but the existing technology responds to us. It's a life tissue, which is a very exciting proposition. Living life tissue, yes. Okay, I cannot see if there are still any questions. So, otherwise, thank you very much.